Hello everyone and a very warm welcome from me, Lisa Taggart, to this March 2023 Lavinia Stamp launch event, Clockwork Carnival. It's a very inspiring launch from the whole team and today I'm delighted to make my contribution. It's a three-day assemblage called My Ticking Heart and it combines probably most of the stamps from the launch. But before we begin, as usual, let's have a quick look at the materials used in today's project. OK, first up, we're going to start off with the substrate and it's an ideology shrine uh, from Tim Hopes. You don't need the, the little shells. Also, I've picked up this uh, matchbox set. You don't need to use this. Any matchbox would do. And of course, Lavinia Stamp watercolour card will need two sheets of that. So first of all then we've got the white gesso for the substrate along with some water and also a distress paint. This time we're using Evergreen Bow which is a nice uh, patina colour and a lovely large paintbrush. In terms of the ink sprays we've got an acrylic emerald green and mahogany twist and amber green or amble green in the uh, mysticals. Also distress sprays in Kitsch flamingo, sponge sugar and salvage patina. The ink pads we've got merlot and graphite in the lovely elements and also a versifying clair in fallen leaves for some stamping etc. I've pulled out these watercolour pencils, any watercolour pencils would do. And we're also using uh, some embossing powders. I've got uh, a dark one, a red one, an ultra thick clear. I've got some uh, gilding wax. This one is PBO and it's King Gold. Also some glue. We've got tacky glue and glossy accents, but any glue of choice. Some foam pads to raise up elements on the project and also gilding, flat, gilding flakes and uh, 3D adhesive for the flakes. I've used a combination of golds and reds and coppers and we've also got the spatula. We've got some um, gems and pearls to stick on at the end and in terms of pencils we've got Ordinary and Stabilo and a water brush and a Posca pen in a nice uh, turquoise colour and the Versa fine marker uh, for some embossing. We've got scissors and some um, paper uh, moulding tools and uh, the tweezers as well. So moving on then to the stencil. This is a beautiful one with hearts and it's called uh, Replenish. And we've also uh, got a ton of stamps to go through. We've got Steampunk Script. We've got Zaya, her lovely topper hat, her goggles, angel wings in large, the rose set, the large heart and the small heart as well. We've got cogs from sets one to three and we've also got the clock set as well as the larger clocks in tick and in talk as well. I've picked out the uh, tick tock uh, word and I've also um, taken the time flies from the larger set with texture one and texture two so a lot of glorious stamps to be used in this project so if you want to convert all of those into something a little like this just keep on watching now as I said we're using this nice shrine from Ideology which I had knocking about. Equally you could use um, a lid from a box or you know you could make your own little box for this. Um, just whatever you have, it doesn't have to be this shrine. Um, we're taking our gesso and the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to give it one coat of the white gesso just to uh, fill in the grain in the wood. Um, so just using a, t a tiny bit of water and I'm going to paint all the edges of the box. Uh, now actually the centre of the box um, is going to be covered up with an insert but I'm going to paint it all anyway just so that uh, none of the um, box is peeking out. So there we are, it's painted and now the next thing to do is to give it a coat of the uh, Distress Paint in Evergreen Bow. 
Uh, same again, covering up all the edges, uh, making sure nothing, no white peeking through and uh, that gives us a lovely base then to carry on with the next layers. Now it's dry, I'm going to give it a spray with our green and blue selection of ink sprays. Uh, if you have an, a spray box, it would probably be good to use that as well. I don't. Um, I'm starting off with the uh, darkest of the sprays and I'm just going to randomly put it um, mostly towards the bottom, but some at the top as well and just let it uh, drip. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm looking for uh, some texture. I'm now going to mix in the uh, Distress Oxide in the spray, uh, the Salvage Patina, and uh, it's going to mix then with the acrylic and uh, it's going to drip. And again, that's what I want. I want it to look like um, a sort of patinaed background and I call this type of patina a pretty patina. Uh, it's not going to be as grungy as some of the um, other stuff that I've done in the past with rust and so forth. It's going to stay fairly bright. So dry that off and uh, basically keep going with the, the, the sprays until you're happy with it. There you can see that I've gone back to the dark one and uh, probably um, spray the Distress Oxide over the top of it again, just until I'm happy with it. I've also uh, sprayed it with um, the uh, Mica Spray because it has the lovely copper colour in it. Um, it's perhaps a little greener than I wanted it to be, so you'll see in a minute or two, I will also spray it down with some water and take some a kitchen towel to it as well just to um, make a more mottled effect so just whenever you think that you've got the uh, desired effect and just then dry it off a lot of it's going to be covered up but that doesn't matter you know it's there and I'm just showing you with uh, the, the water that you can remove some of it and uh, create that uh, that uh, drippy look uh, about it. Now uh, we're moving on to the stamp and I'm not putting this on a block I'm just taking it in my hand and I'm using just a tiny part of the stamp to add a little grunge and uh, I've chosen this dark brown to use in this project today. I'm not using um, black uh, ink pads at all but you of course can use black instead. This is just a rather dark colour and uh, it's a nice juicy ink pad and I thought this would uh, complement the greens and the pinks. Just keep going and add little bits here and there. Again some of it will be covered up, some of it will peek through, that doesn't matter. Um, the idea is to give it this um, universal um, little touches here and there. Dry that off and then the next stage is some stenciling. So I've taken the lovely heart stem stencil and uh, the uh, 3D adhesive, uh, which is a new product for me and I thought I would give it a go. It's on the Lavinia stamp site. Now, place your stencil down where you would like uh, to uh, put the adhesive and it's like spreading butter really. Um, my advice is to keep it as even as you can and don't overwork it like I appear to be doing there um, and not too thick. And once you're happy then lift it off and see what you've got. There we go, it's not too bad. And you have to wait for it to uh, go transparent, so that might take a little time. I'm just going to do both edges as well as the back. So the same again, spread like butter, lift off and wipe away the parts that you don't want. And the same again, repeat. Now that this is done, I'm just going to set that aside and let it dry until it goes transparent and move on to something else. 
Now this is a, a sheet of Lavinia Stamps watercolour card which I've pre-painted. It's not gessoed, it's just painted, spread with water and dabbed off. So it's got that um, drip effect. And I'm really going to do the same thing as I did with the substrate. I'm going to start with the dark colour and this time I'm going to do a little bit of drying in between each spray so it doesn't mix too much on the paper. And this sheet of paper is going to be used to stamp and um, emboss my other elements and also to create the insert for the substrate. So I want it to look very similar to um, the wooden shrine um, and I want it to look, uh, you know, patinaed and grungy. And you just, again, keep going with your sprays until you're happy and then leave it to dry. Next up is our second sheet of watercolour paper which I've cut in half and the first part of the half we're going to take our pink sprays this time and these are going to be you this is going to be used for the contrasting elements in the project. So we're doing a similar thing we're taking the combination of our sprays and we're um, making a although pink isn't very grungy, <laughs> it's a textured kind of interesting background to stamp on later. Now I leave this to dry and when you're happy with it, set it aside as well. Now that the uh, adhesive has gone transparent, I'm taking my gilding flakes and I'm pushing them carefully down on top. Uh, this uh, uh, stenciled uh, glue is still very tacky and it's, uh, as you can see, grabbing on to the flakes and make sure it's all covered and once you think it is covered now some of mine I think wasn't and I had to put a little more on but uh, once it's uh, uh, covered you press it down make sure it's all adhered and then I've got this little sponge which is uh, for using of gilding flakes and I wipe away uh, the access and I'm not too bothered if it's uh, not perfect because we are going for this uh, pretty patina grungy look. Now the next part is creating the insert for the box um, because I do want um, there to be some stamping in the inside and it would be very hard to do that um, if I was just to try to do that at the back of the box. So we're going to do it um, on the insert and then put it in when it's finished. So I've cut that out as you can see but there is a little edge which I'm going to have to remove and I've trimmed it down. And I'm taking my brown ink pad and the lovely script stamp and I'm going to start creating a textured interesting background to be inserted into the substrate. As you can see, I'm choosing in this project to do some stamping with my Elements ink pad. They're lovely juicy pads and um, primarily I'll be using them um, for embossing because they're, they're so nice and wet and juicy. But they work for just normal stamping in these circumstances as well. And to do this cheat where I put multiple stamps on the acrylic block and it certainly speeds things up a bit. Now again, many of these elements are, are going to be covered up with uh, other aspects of the project, uh, but I don't mind that. I, I just need to create an interesting backdrop for, uh, for our focal image. 
um, I've taken the other textured stamp as you can see again in my hand without the acrylic block I'm just dabbing it here and there for extra interest Now that that's dried off, I thought I would also repeat the process of adding the gilding flakes just towards the bottom of the insert and uh, basically do the same thing all over again. There you have it. Um, we've got a matching set, hopefully. <laughs> and I'll stick this into the back of the box and that uh, hopefully will be ready then for the other 3D elements once they're completed. Moving on, I've taken the scraps left over from the first sheet of watercolour paper. Um, that's the sheet where I cut the insert out. And we're going to uh, stamp a few uh, clocks and cogs and also goggles. And these this time are going to be heat embossed. And as I said, I'm using the Elements ink pads for this because they're nice and juicy. And this anti-static bag is, I'm afraid, homemade. It's corn flour and some uh, cheesecloth. It's not the best, but mine, unfortunately, is packed away still. Uh, but it worked uh, and I've purchased another one in the meantime. <laughs> so stamping the larger clock and using this dark um, fine embossing powder. Uh, this is all I had to hand and it's like a graphite colour. You can use black or whichever colour you have, which is as long as it's a dark colour. So we've um, used the powder and now we are heating that with our heat tool. And you can see there it's uh, changing over. So repeat that with the other stamps. And I'm going to also stamp the goggles just with the ink. And I'm taking this um, Versafine uh, marker, which is the same as uh, the just the ink pad only in marker form. This time I'm using the ultra thick embossing enamel because I want some height to this. Now you can only use these um, this chunky powder for um, details that aren't particularly fine. So if you've got larger areas of the stamp so you can see there it creates um, height and I'm doing the same technique with uh, some of the cogs that aren't so detailed so that I'll get this uh, raised edge and they're being done in exactly the same way. And just before I carry on with the goggles, I'm taking my Stabilo Black All, Stabilo All Black pencil and I'm just bringing back the detail of the stamp on the edges there. And I'm also filling in the goggles with the turquoise um, acrylic pen, the Posca pen, because I don't want the centre to be black. And later on, when I finish this part, I'm going to fill in the centre with glossy accents, so that creates the impression of glass. But before I do that, this is where we're taking the gilding wax and very gently um, dabbing the very top of the embossed area to create the impression of um, you know 3D goggles instead of flat and I'm doing the same uh, on the the clocks and the compasses and also the cogs so there you are they're now gilded and I'm going to do the glossy accents on the goggles and then cut them out so now on to the pink elements. So we're doing exactly the same uh, technique. We're taking our stamps and we're taking our element ink pad. This time it's the Merlot, the lovely dark, uh, ready, winey colour. And we're going to stamp uh, and use in my homemade <laughs> anti-static bag. And we're going to stamp uh, the heart and all the other little cogs and the wings and all the rest of it. This time I'm using um, 
embossing uh, powder that's uh, I suppose it's a dark burgundy but again you can use uh, a red or whatever color you have to hand you could also use gold and you wouldn't have to do the um, the wax uh, part of it that's it embossed and basically repeat that process then for the other items I'm also doing the little flowers so there they are all stamped and embossed and as with the last elements on the green card we're doing the same technique and we're gilding uh, some of the elements on the pink I'm a bit heavy-handed I think with this one go lightly is my advice cut them out and there we are we have uh, some of our little elements and the next stage then is to take the little flowers and to give them some dimension. I'm showing off the hearts and the wings. <laughs> but uh, the little flowers are flat and if you have a little bit of foam pad and this little tool you just push them in at the back to break the fibres in the card and then push them in on the middle. Do the same for the smaller one turn it over, push it in and then whatever glue of choice, add a little dab in the centre and layer them up and you've got a little 3D flower. Repeat that with the others that uh, have been stamped as well. Next up it's the focal image and we're using the other half of our uh, A4 sheet of watercolour card and we're taking our focal image and it is a beautiful image and we're going to create uh, our centerpiece and to do that we're stamping the lady and we're going to put this uh, glorious hat on her head how could you resist <laughs> Lovely. Next up is the heart and although I'm going to be layering the other hearts that I've already created on top, I'm still going to stamp this but I'm not going to colour it. And I'm not going to cut this whole image out until I've coloured the face and the hat, which I will do shortly. So here we are and I'm selecting some coloured pencils and I'll show you the colours of those in the, in the meantime. Your colour scheme could be different from this of course but I'm sticking to uh, pinks, lilacs, uh, greens and then some kind of flashy tones. So there you are, pink, red, greens, blues and purples. I've taken this um, pale fleshy tone. Of course, you can use browns depending on the skill, the skin color you wish to create. And I'm also going to be using my water brush along with these colors. So this is like a base layer, and as you'll see, I'll layer some other colors on top before I add the water to it. Next I'm taking the purple colour and I'm really using this uh, for the shadow parts of the face, the neck and the shoulders and I'm following uh, the stamp for this. As you can see there's darker areas on the stamp and I'm using those as my guide. Uh, very often on a face the shadows are purple so adding that to the mix.
Now I'm taking the water brush and uh, igniting the watercolour pencils and you don't see this uh, but occasionally when I think it's getting too rich I'll dab the, the tip of the brush on a piece of kitchen towel to take away some of the uh, excess colour. I'll just keep going until it's uh, mixed in and not too crazy looking. I'm also then taking the flesh colour pencil again and going over the top just to blend it all in and uh, smooth it out a bit. Next up it's the hat and I'm using a dark green colour similar to the colours I've been using in the rest of the project and I'm going to combine that with uh, blues and purples, pinks and lilacs I'm hoping to blend the colours of the focal image in with some of the colours of the background. Now I'm taking my Stabilo All Black Pencil and adding some more depth to the shadowed areas, uh, the top of the eyes, below the nose, probably the centre of the mouth and under the neck etc. Just to uh, allow the features to stand out a little more, uh, darkening up the pupils and uh, hopefully putting a bit more life into the face but following the stamping of the image. As you can see she's been cut out and uh, I'm also then going to put some little embellishments on some of the elements. I'm going to add some uh, gems from my little box and it's like a, a ready bluey type of gem and also some pearlescent flat pearls. So I'm adding the gems to the centre of the little flowers for a little bit of twinkle. And you can see in the background there that I've also added gl glossy accents to some of the uh, larger clocks. And it's all coming together, all the little elements are cut out. And it's just a matter of now that the little embellishments have been added, the little twinkly bits, we'll start to uh, put it all together.
Now, as you can see, I'm separating everything out and I'm keeping some of the little cogs, uh, mainly the green ones, to, to the box. And I'm going to re try to arrange those uh, mainly around the edges. Obviously, the, the lady will be in the centre of the box. And so I'm trying to figure out a way of uh, sticking things down. This is the first layer and they're the smaller elements. Some of them are raised, some of them are gilded, some of them aren't. And it's just a combination of textures and colours and design just to give uh, it interest. And uh, you'll see me sticking down and fussing around uh, where each little element is going to be placed. I'm just checking there that she fits in okay and she does thankfully. Now this next part uh, is where I'm figuring out where some of the larger uh, clocks are going to be placed inside the box and what I want to do is to raise them up on foam pads so they are the second layer and then the centre focal image will be the final layer uh, raised up uh, over them again. So uh, first of all uh, I want to uh, create the heart which will be stuck on top of the uh, focal image and I've taken my foam pads and cut them to size and placing the small heart on top of the large heart. There you are. And because the project is called My Ticking Heart I got the idea of putting the, the tiny cogs around the, the uh, heart to look like uh, obviously a, a clockwork um, heart. So I'm sticking those um, probably in a diagonal across the heart and also um, probably embellishing them with gems and making them twinkle.
So I decided to use the wings more as shoulders and um, that was the uh, width that I had for the box. And so I placed those, stuck those on the shoulders before I stuck down the heart. And there's the focal image complete. So back to the little boxes, you could use ordinary max bo match boxes or even uh, a lot of 3D gel, um, whatever you wish. But uh, it was important for me to raise these up and you can see that I've um, done the edges in green so you can't see the boxes. So they're stuck onto the back now and it's a question of fiddling, fiddling about with my second layer to make sure that they um, fit in uh, to the sides of the of the focal image um, and I've layered these uh, clocks up on two layers of foam pads and um, you'll see me um, just rehearsing I suppose where they go and how they fit I think in the end up I cut a little bit off one of them just so that it's in exactly the right place because the little boxes underneath the, the lady um, can poke into the clocks <laughs> so it was a wee bit tricky just working out where to place them so the boxes fit in but she was raised beautifully um, by using the ma match boxes I must say and um, that gave her the, re the height that I was looking for. So there you are, uh, it's finally put together after much fussing. <laughs> I decided to uh, do some extra little elements and add those in just to balance it out and also then to stamp and emboss with the, the red set on the pink paper, the little um, sentiments, the tick tock and the time flies and now it's finished. And it does twinkle with the uh, gilding wax and the embossing and the glossy accents and uh, quite pleased with how it turned out. I really hope that uh, it inspired you to use the collection in a different way and uh, it's interesting uh, for me now to do a project that isn't completely flat. Uh, it's nice to get back to that. I used to do a lot of that in the past uh, and it's been a, a glorious event altogether and I'm sure you've had lots of inspiration from the rest of the team. So of course have a go yourselves, do your own versions. I look forward to seeing what you create and of course until then take very good care of yourselves. Until next time.